Good day brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to carry on with our Ezekiel Bible study and moving into chapter 19. And once again I've given a brief overview of this chapter. And um, before we move into that, can I ask you if you wouldn't mind please subscribing to my channel, smashing the like button, and if you feel like leaving a comment, please feel free to in the comment section below. I love hearing from you. So let's have a look at Ezekiel 19 and let's see how we can break it down briefly. So here we see in this chapter, it's a lamentation, right, that uses the imagery of lions and their cubs to symbolize the royal lineage of Israel. And they're particularly focusing on the kings of Judah. So here we see the chapter begins with a call to lament for the princes of Israel, liking them to lions and lionesses. This imagery emphasizes their strength and nobility as well as their tragic downfall. And we see that in verses 1 and 2. Ezekiel 19 is a collection of two lamentations, two sorrowful songs over the condition of Israel in Ezekiel's day. It is a lamentation both by its poetic arrangement and by its subject matter. For the Prince of Israel, this lamentation mainly is concerned with the latter kings of Israel. Significantly, God had called them princes rather than kings, even though it refers to three of the latter kings of Judah. It is also significant to know that God referred to them as princes of Israel, even though the northern kingdom was long before conquered and scattered. And then we move down and see, a little later in those two, two verses, a lioness. The lioness was a mother to the princes mentioned in the previous verse. The lioness is best understood as Israel or Jerusalem itself, who lay down among the lions by taking her place in the community of nations. Remember all the nations around her? all the pagan nations. So here we see now, as we move into three verses 3 and 4, the lioness and her cubs. The chapter describes a lioness who raises her cubs, representing the royal family of Judah. One cub is depicted as having grown strong and become a young lion, symbolizing King Jehoshiah who was taken captive by Pharaoh Necho. The second cub represents King Jehokim, who also described he was taken to Babylon after being captured, further illustrating the decline of Judah's royal line and the loss of its power and influence. That's in verses 5 to 9. She took another of her cubs and made him a young lion. This was King Jehoiakim of Judah, reigned from 609 to 597 BC. He also learned the ways of the lions and devoured men. He knew their desolate places and lay waste to their cities. For a time, Jehoiakim seemed to rule with power and authority. Others heard and were affected by the noise of his roaring. So here we also see as we move into verses 10 onwards, the destruction of the royal line. The chapter concludes with a lament over the destruction of the royal lineage and the desolation of the land. Once strong and noble, a lineage is now brought low and the people are left without a king. Your mother was like a vine. Here Ezekiel returned to the familiar image 
of the vine as a representation of Israel. The picture of a fruitful and strong kingdom, fruitful and full of branches. She had strong branches and a set captures of rulers. Ezekiel probably had in mind the most glorious years of Israel's monarchy, the reigns of David and Solomon. In those years, God lifted Israel up among the nations and great stature. It was the symbolism of the lamentation. The lamentation serves as a reflection on the consequence of unfaithfulness and the unfaithful leaders and the judgment that came upon them. It highlights the loss of hope and the devastation that resulted from turning away from God. So here in summary, chapter 9 uses metaphors of lions and cubs to lament the downfall of the kings of Judah and the destruction of the royal line. It serves as a poignant reminder of the consequences of disobedience and loss of God's favor. So here we need to folks remember as we go into this coming week, we need to reflect on our walk with the Lord and be reminded of the consequence of disobedience and the loss of God's favor. Folks, have a blessed week and we'll chat in chapter 20.